Good evening, and welcome to the Church of St. Ignatius Loyola. Please take a moment to turn <laughs> off your cell phones and beepers, and then please stand and face the back of the church for the lighting of the fire. The church lights will be extinguished in just a moment. As we come together at the setting of this sun, let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now mark our Paschal candle, Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, 
the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. They should go on the start. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lighting of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Therefore, dearest friends, standing in the awesome glory of this holy night, invoke with me, I ask you, the mercy of God Almighty, that he who has been pleased to number me, though unworthy among the Levites, may pour into me his light unshadowed, that I may sing this candle's perfect praises. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, His Son, His only begotten who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from the worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This 
when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. Oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, were thee alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written. The night shall be as bright as day. Dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes fault away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters conquered, and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servant's hand, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees to build a torch so precious. Oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever.
Please keep your tapers lit and be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the abyss. While a mighty wind swept over the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was, God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Thus evening came, morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water from the d above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation. Every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, morning followed, the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and to serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights the greater one to govern the sky, the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was Evening came, morning followed, the fourth day. 
Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, fill the waters of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things on the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that cre crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. And God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Age to age, 
You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The water stood higher than the mountains. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well. With the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, he set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar. Then he said to his servants, both of you stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust, laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued forward. 
When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son, Isaac, and put him on top of the wood on the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from he heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram, offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yahweh. Hence people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. In your descendants, all the nations of the world shall find blessings. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increase the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and through the Paschal mystery, 
made your servant Abraham, father of nations, once you swore. Grant, we pray, that your people may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split it into two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariot and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so it turned to dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's ho horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had allowed the Israelites, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot, he is cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
will sing to the Lord glorious in triumph. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my song, my salvation. Let us sing to Please stand. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord called you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then caught off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath and for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is to me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again diluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you, or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, stormed, battled, and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians, your foundation in sapphires, I will make your battlements of ro rubies and your gates of carbuncles, all your walls of precious stone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall the peace of your children. And in justice shall you be established far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord.
me near and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will pray. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, glorify your name by increasing your chosen people as you promised long ago. In reward for their trust, may we see in the church the fulfillment of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and the nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen, and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the netherworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked in the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is. 
where strength, where understanding, that you may know also where our length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge. The one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling. Before whom the stars at their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law that endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light towards splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks for to God. <laughs> Please stand. Let us pray. Father, you increase your church by continuing to call all people to salvation. Listen to our prayers and always watch over those you cleanse in baptism. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, 
When the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name. Because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
please stand. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up. What had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. O God of unchanging power and eternal light. Whoops, wrong prayer. Let us pray. <laughs> I'm only human. <laughs> o God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render your, you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please carefully extinguish your tapers and be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. 
Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, and we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin, if then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all, and to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, just as he had said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran, ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Our Savior lives. <clears throat> I will shout it again, our Savior lives. Alleluia, alleluia. We come here this night. We come with joy in our hearts to celebrate the most extraordinary event in human history. And from all of the readings we heard throughout this night, the history of our salvation, a story and point of fact of God's love for us. From the moment of creation, the very first moment of creation, God had us in mind that we join God in glory. Throughout human history, the weaving of that relationship, sometimes by way of detour, but always forward always God calling, calling us back when we turned away. And the sure sign of his love, of the permanency of that, was the gift of his son who was sacrificed, though that for all time we knew God with us joyfully. Jesus Christ alive in our world, not subjected to death, human death, but really what the meaning of life is being sustained by God from the moment of creation, and it will never, ever end. Love does not die. God is love, and we are called to that. We may pass from this physical life, but it's not the end. And how do we know that? because we here believe in Jesus Christ. Our Savior lives. Let us go into the world to shout that, to make it alive for the world. That's what we're asked to do. From the very moment, the first 
verses of the exalted, let the very foundations of this holy place shake with the joy that's erupting. That's who we are. Joyful disciples of the one raised from the dead, let us go into our world and shout, our Savior lives. And now, always the question, how do you do that? Can you imagine if I left this church, went there on Park Avenue and 84th and kept walking down the street yelling out, our Savior lives, alleluia? The padded wagon would come and I'd be off to the psych ward of Bellevue. What does it mean? What does it mean to say and to live and to say our Savior lives. I thought of this through these past few days. Most significantly, on Thursday when we began our Triduum, our days of prayer to celebrate this very night. And yesterday, so many people in this church for three hours and culminating and ending with a dramatic presentation of the death of Jesus. And we sang together, were you there? I don't know about you, but when I saw the numbers of people in this church for that length of time, and I was sitting in the back and saw so many, tears welled up. Yes because of the death of Jesus, but more because of the faith that drew us here. It was inspiring. It was emotionally uplifting. And again, last night, when we stayed and we lingered as we came forward to venerate the cross, the extraordinary depth of feeling and faith we didn't have to do it, but we gathered in the same number gathered this night, slowly pacing forward. And then I thought how much we cling, how much we hold on to Good Friday. We don't want to let it go. I thought about that for a while. And then I thought of Hebrew scripture, where Moses is leading the children of God out of the desert from the bondage of the Pharaoh whose story we heard. And at a point they became discouraged the world overwhelmed them. They clung to their past. They wouldn't let it go. And Moses said to them, I set before you this day life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your children will live. Extraordinary if you've ever been to a Jewish home or have a Jewish friend and the toast ordinarily, or at a point it's lachaim, to life. We go through death, the journey that they did. We came up this aisle venerating the cross, but now we have to hear Jesus Christ saying to us distinctly, choose life. Go out there into the world, no longer clinging to the feet of Jesus in the cross, but to be empowered by it. Our Savior lives because we believe, and we bring that belief to others. We don't manically go out there and scream like I just said. We live it. That's a challenge.
Well, how do you do it? Global problems. We're not going to solve them. Problems we have even with our families. We pray that they will be resolved. We take little steps and then bigger steps. And we have examples out there in today's world as we have had throughout history about what it means what it means to say out clearly and shout it, our Savior lives. I was reminded of Pope Francis in the very first year he became our Holy Father, went to Brazil to the World Youth Day. And he said to them, the future of our world is yours. Live it now, evangelize. Bring people closer to Christ. Go on a journey with him as these candidates, catechumens have been, on a journey closer to Christ. And then he threw in this other part that was unsettling to many. He said to them, and I echo him for our benefit, be disruptors. When you see injustice, say something, do something. You go through the Beatitudes, hungry, feed, naked, clothe. That is saying our Savior lives. We do it because Jesus Christ has given us life that will never, ever end unless we foolishly say we don't want to live. We need to engage the world where it is. Models out there, there are people in this parish, there are people all over that go to the border of Texas to be with migrants, to comfort them. Our Savior lives. There are brave legislators that will stand up in front of their colleagues and say, no more guns. Victims of prejudice, biased by their own colleagues, they said clearly, our Savior lives. Children and youth and the parents of them want health care, whether they are transgender, gay, or straight, they are God's children demanding care. It's a human right. Our Savior lives. This world is polarized, not simply in our country, but around the world where though there are those who want us to live in darkness, to be fearful of one another, and in the process, we denigrate. We don't honor the dignity of humans or even of the planet itself. To stand up to that, to call it for what it is, to live honestly, to value truth and justice in little ways and in big ways, our Savior lives. That's what we do in our own city, in our own homes. And sadly, we need to be disruptors of our church. 600 more cases of sexual abuse released this week in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Something needs to be done besides hollow apologies and buying people off with cash settlements. We need to examine who we are as a church and call out one another for what is right and just. Then, 
and only then will the foundations of this holy place be shaken. The church will be reawakened to its mission to be faithful disciples, heralds of God's love. We gather this holy night, this most extraordinary night in human history, to once again be refreshed and renewed by the waters of baptism, some for the first time, to be fed from this table, a table of sacrifice, not simply to feel good about it, but to give it to others, to go into our homes, our communities, as the Pope said, into the world, this world that leads into the future, and pronounce and shout with every fiber of our body, joyfully shouting, our Savior lives. Let us rejoice and be glad this night. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, our Savior lives, alleluia. Alleluia. I now invite our director of our RCIA program, Maureen Fulham, to call forth the candidates for baptism. Will those who will be baptized please stand with your sponsor when your name is called? Ken Cheng, Genevieve Hartman, Patrick Haran, Yungwai Jasmine Huang, Courtney Lofton, Tayab Maboub, Naomi Minato, Etra Rancourt. Dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of these, our brothers and sisters, about to be baptized in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. I invite all of us now to kneel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, Pray for us, Saint Basil. Pray for us, Saint Martin. Pray for us, Saint Benedict. Pray for us, Saint Francis and Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, Saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Bring these chosen ones to new birth through the grace of baptism. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty and loving God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, 
to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been baptized with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, our brothers and sisters are about to be buried in Christ in baptism so they may walk in newness of life. They will now renounce evil and its works and pledge to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. Candidates to be received into our Catholic Church and all of us will soon renew our own baptismal vows. I ask those who are about to be baptized to continue to stand and everyone else may be seated. For those to be baptized, I ask you to respond, I do, to the questions I am about to ask of you. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the seductions of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I now call forth those to be baptized. Genevieve Hartman. Could you put your head over the water? 
Genevieve Agnes, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Courtney Lofton. Jack. Courtney Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tayab Mahboob. Tayab Augustine, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ken Chang. Take your glasses off, they're gonna get wet. Ken Luke, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Young Wei Jasmine Huang. Jasmine Luke, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Give the towel, the towel. Naomi Minato. Naomi Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The over there. Patrick Haran. Patrick, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There's a towel. Etrian Rancourt.
Etra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as sons and daughters of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. May the light of Christ burn brightly in your hearts as you live as joyful disciples of Jesus Christ, going into the world proclaiming our Savior lives. You may now extinguish your tapers. Will those candidates already baptized in the Christian faith who now wish to enter into full communion with the Roman Catholic Church, will you please stand with your sponsors when I call your name? Justin Daly, Benjamin Elmore, James Foreman, Fred Northrup, My dear candidates, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of Jesus Christ, the sign of the church's unity.
I invite you to repeat after me your profession of faith. I believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness had led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. I now invite you to stand next to your fellow candidates. Will the baptized Catholics who are candidates for the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist please come forward with your sponsors when I call your name. Bryant Beckford, Andrew Herrera, Sean Hoyt, Jonathan Lay, Anthony Mejia, Steve Rancourt. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. I invite everyone to please stand. My dear friends, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Okay. You can go back. No. You can just leave it here.
first, maybe again. Jasmine, Luke, okay. Jasmine, Luke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <laughs> Naomi Ann, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. James, John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Fred Thomas, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Benjamin Gabriel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Jonathan Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Sean Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Stephen John. Stephen John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Andrew Alberto, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Saint Ignatius, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Justin James. Justin James, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And Luke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
The Lord be with you. Teb Augustine. Teb Augustine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Courtney Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Genevieve Agnes, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Etra. Etra, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I now invite all of those baptized, received into the church, and confirmed to face the congregation. And now let us show them our support and our love. Please prepare now to relight your tapers. Just leave it there.
Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God and the Holy Catholic Church? The response is, I do. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the seductions of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. All of us present here have renewed our baptismal promises and welcomed our brothers and sisters into the community of faith created by our Lord's Paschal Mystery. I will now sprinkle, sprinkle us with baptismal water as a sign of our communion in the Lord's death and resurrection.
On this night when we celebrate Jesus risen from the dead, let us pray for new life. Our response is, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For a deep faith in the resurrection of Jesus and in God's power to bring the dead to life, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those newly received into the church tonight, that God's life-giving spirit may be poured out upon them, and in gratitude for the sign of new life they are to all of us, let us pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who find it difficult to enter into the joy of Easter, that they may know the consolation of the risen Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That life-giving interventions be found to end the war in Ukraine and to help humanitarian aid those reach those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, the Lord hear our prayer. For the members and friends of the Catholic Medical Mission Board who join us this evening, that their generous work will be blessed by God's abundant grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the power of the risen Lord strengthen the sick and welcome the dead into the new life of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, risen Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone here present, for our dreams and intentions, for a blessing and gladness upon us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen, risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you raised Jesus from the dead as the sure sign of your love conquers all evil. Hear our prayers on this joyful vigil of Easter and raise our world to new life. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord. Please extinguish your tapers and be seated.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant, to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness for all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in the abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy martyrs and apostles, with John the Baptizer, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, and weighing our merits, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in thy unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
with great joy in our hearts to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us now pray in song to our God with the words Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us extend to one another a gesture of peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Grace, peace. Peace be with you. On you stay, qui tolis recata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis recata mundi, miserere nobis. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I depart, we really do need to thank people who helped us this evening, uh, this rather short service. Uh, all of the uh, lectors and Eucharistic ministers who did a great job. Uh, our Our veteran altar servers who came out of retirement just for this, Ken and Chris, great job. Uh, our liturgies are always brought to celestial heights. I say that every time by the voices who lead us in song, Doug and all his compatriots up there. Father Hallinan has worked like a dog these past few days for being MC, so let's acknowledge him before he cries. <laughs> On behalf of uh, Fathers Hallinan, Hilbert, and Bergen, and for myself, we wish you a very happy, blessed, and uh, joyous Easter. Also, at the end, oh, I forgot. Let's also acknowledge and thank those who have joined us, our uh, new Catholics here. And all of us will have an opportunity to greet them personally. I invite all of you, please, uh, to come around the corner uh, the grammar school, as you know, is on 84th, right next door to the church, McKinnon Hall, for our back to, thanks be God, traditional reception to welcome our new Catholics. Uh, prepared, and let's give her a word of thank you as well, by our master, caterer, hostess, set-upper, orderer, florist, Miss Frau Jean Juncker. So around the corner, there's tons of food. Uh, and finally, as you depart, uh, please take your tapers and the holders and deposit them either with uh, ministers of hospitality or in the baskets in the back. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to these, those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.